So onto our next assignment, we want to see how we can use gouache and what's the proper way and consistency we need in order to complete that assignment. So to give you a quick look, this is where we're going, right? And this is what I'm going to focus on right now. We have our value scale and we're moving from high to low, low to high, and we're doing that in incremental steps. So in incremental steps, what I want you to think about is the equality that exists in each jump. So if we look at this area here, right? This kind of flattens out, right? Here's a perfect example over here. Now, if we look at this, we kind of flattening out, has a similarity in value, kind of a similarity in value, but we're looking for the differences in those values. And the thing I want you to watch out for is jumps. So here we have, uh, we, we're working on a um, white and black value scale. We have uh, tints where we're adding white progressively to create a value scale. And we have shade where we're adding black progressively to create a value scale. Now, if we look at this big jump that's happening, right? This jump in value does not equal, right? Let's say another jump in value that's happening on this scale. That's a very quiet, very small jump in value. This is a very big jump in value. Your objective is to get equal jumps in value as you move down the scale. Now, we have our acryl gouache. This gouache is a little different than traditional gouache. It has acrylic in it. So it acts a little bit differently. And what that means is that it can't be activated again with water. Once it dries, it dries. So when I'm using my gouache, I actually don't put out a lot. I put out a little at a time because it dries quickly. And otherwise, if I hammer out tons of paint, I'm wasting it. What I have here is a piece of paper towel that I've made damp. So what that does for me is it gives me a little bit of extra time when I'm working with the gouache in the sense that it's being, moisture is being held below the paint. So it's, it's not drying out as quick. Now I don't, this isn't soaked, right? If it's soaked, it's gonna make my water, my paint like water. We don't want that. Gouache is not watercolor. Uh, gouache, when we use it in color theory, has a lot of pigment to it, right? And it dries matte. Therefore, we can really start to evaluate the color. The other thing I want you to think about too, is that if we come in and we treat this like a watercolor, and it becomes very loose, okay? And I put too much water in there. What I'm gonna get is I'm gonna get washes. We're not doing washes for gouache, right? Gouache is about that pigment, that density that's happening. So with that in mind, right? I'm going to start to mix. Now, when you mix your paint, right, come into your paint at the side. You don't want to get in there like this, right? Starts so coming into the paint at the side, right? I'm going to get some of that paint on that brush, right? Now, black is an incredibly strong color, right? If I have black and I add white to it, it's going to turn darker and darker very quickly. So I want to just use a little bit of black, right? Now, if we're getting a gray, I would start with white first. If you're working in a lighter value, a higher value, and work your worst way towards the gray, um, as opposed to putting down a lot of black and trying to add tons of white into it to compensate. Now, if you watch me when I'm mixing my paint, I'm going back, forth, back and forth. What I'm not doing is scrub, 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 right? That is gonna kill my brush. And uh, it's gonna be inefficient when I mix my paint. And it's also gonna load up a hell of a lot of paint in that brush which is a waste when it comes down to it. So I'm going back and back forth. I'm very cautious when I come in at the edge of my uh, edge of my color because I'm only working with white and black. I really am not wiping my brush. If I were working with other colors, I would because I would not want that color necessarily for our purposes in color theory to start to affect the other colors I'm working with. Okay, I'm loaded up. Now you're gonna see that as you work this, you're gonna get some streaks. And you have a very small kind of timeline in which to kind of work that out. So I go back and forth very delicately, delicately. Now that has a density to it, right? So what happens if we hammer out way too much paint, right? Too thin, a wash. Now let's see what happens when we hammer out way too much. This is not mixed, right? If I come in here, I get streaks. 
That's not our goal here, right? Our goal is even flat color for the value scale. Keep that in mind. This is something I see students do a lot. So we really do want to work back and forth, back and forth. I'm touching the paint lightly. Because of that, it's not getting loaded into my brush, right? It's almost sitting on the surface of the brush and um, as opposed to just clumping in there. So as it gets thicker and thicker, right? we were, we're gonna start to get ridges in that paint. Right? So you will have to start to pull it out. The other thing I want you to be cautious about too, is that if we have this, right? The assumption is that that was enough paint, but in reality, it's actually still has a little bit of a translucence to it. So I want you to go in and experiment with the gouache. What happens as you add more water? What happens as you aren't adding more water, right? What, ha what does it feel like when it works like a wash, which is not what we're looking for, right? What does it feel like when it becomes too clumpy? What does it feel like when we layer? When we layer, it's gonna crack with this specific paint. If we get too much layers on there, the, the actual paint will start to crack. So keep that in mind. The other thing too, what happens when it gets tacky and we get back on top of that, okay? What happens when we get that paint and our brush is not mixed properly? All things to consider. So you're gonna do this, you're gonna practice, you're gonna practice with different um, values of gray, right? Now there's something going on here for me right now, is that I have gray loaded up in this brush already. Right? So what if I'm going for a lighter value, I could come in and start to look at my white. And as opposed to going in, dunking my brush and cleaning it, I can use what exists on my brush to my benefit. What I need to do is to make sure that I mix all the way through. Now it's good habit and form to get into a painting with a piece of paper towel in your hands. Because okay, if you found that you nailed your value, right? and I no longer need all this, I gotta go darker, I don't know, I no longer want all that paint on there. I come in here and I dunk this as is, right? I'm gonna be jamming that brush on the bottom of that, that uh, glass and I'm gonna be killing my brush. The other thing too, is I'm putting a hell of a lot of pigment into the water. Because of that, I keep two, two, uh, two water sources, right? Before I go in there and wash, right? I just squeeze some of that paint out. You'll be surprised, stuff comes out, right? You get some in there. Makes it easier to wash the brush, right? Less chance that I'm gonna pollute my other colors by having colors in there. You can see there's still paint in there. This is very important when you start to work with, with color beyond white and black. Okay. Then I just go to another. You can see there's still pigment in that brush. Keep that in mind for sure. And when I wipe my brush, I have less moisture on it, which means that it's not gonna water down my paint as quickly. So that's something to consider as well. You always wanna make sure that you're changing your water, keep it fresh. Everything that's in there, if it's in your brush, it's in there, it comes back, it's gonna mix into your color, it's gonna give you dirty color. As you continue to work your way and you feel how the gouache responds, and you feel where it is becoming very opaque, right? And that it's a smooth consistency, that it's not tracking, right? That you've mixed it properly, that it isn't acting as a transparency wash. That's not what we're going for, right? We want that, op uh, that uh, opaqueness in the medium. Then you can come in and start to say, okay, how am I gonna get these, these rectangles? Now these are one inch by two inch rectangles as we go all the way down. Now I have students do this different ways. They come in, and they start painting, you kind of like get a sense for what the size of the one inch by two inch is, right? And they start working their different values right here. And they come in, okay, and work another value here, there. So that when they come back, they can turn around and actually cut the one inch by two inch out of this bristle. Or conversely, what you can do is take a strip, Cut all your pieces, your verticals, and then paint each one from there. That's for you to problem solve, see which one works better for you. Once you have your chips, I'm gonna cut them up and start to line them and see where the jumps in values are happening and working for us, or where become, they become too drastic, too subtle. If the paint quality and the paint handling is on point or if it needs to be um, improved. And um, then we'll start to put the scale together. After you complete, 
this scale, right? This is where our home is. This is where we're beginning. We're dealing with white and black. After you complete your white to black scale, right? Then you go on to creating your tint. Tint terminology is hue plus white. We're gonna continue to work our scale. Then we go on to our shade. Shade terminology, black plus yellow. Now, if you choose a, this is a very light color, higher value color, that yellow, right? As opposed to choosing a lower color value. So think about it, if you take this purple, the lower color value, right? And you start adding black into it, it's gonna turn really dark very quickly, right? Which will give you a more subtle, more subtle increments in your value scale, right? If you take a value that has a light, a high a color that has a high value, right? It's gonna turn darker at a little slower pace. So something to consider when you, you choose your um, hue for tint and when you choose your hue for shade. These are nine steps. This is one inch by two inch rectangles. You are doing them on rectangles because that gives us the ability to move these in and out and play with them in the sense of does this work, does it not work, right? Does it need a little more black? Is the paint quality not great, the handling? Is the craftsmanship off? Right? Is the cut of the wrangle, the rectangle not working for us? All these things to consider. Now for on our, when we meet next, I don't want you to glue this down just yet, right? We're collecting and making our chips and we're evaluating those scale jumps. From there, when we find our solution, we'll start to lay out the piece. 